Welcome back. In episode 2 of Creation Week, we'll briefly look at the Big Bang idea before learning more about the events on day 5. Most of this information can also be found in the book on pages 18 to 26. Atheists are people who don't believe that God exists. They now have a big problem to solve. They have to try and explain how everything that exists came into being. Who or what made it? Many atheists and other people who doubt the trustworthiness of God's word use the idea of a Big Bang to try and explain how the universe originated by itself, without God. They believe that long, long ago there was absolutely nothing. And then suddenly there was something. They explain their idea like this. All the matter and energy in the billions upon billions of stars in the universe were once compressed into a single little dot. And then suddenly, inexplicably, it exploded. Somehow, they say that this explosion led to the formation of large amounts of hydrogen gas, which then spread throughout the universe. The hydrogen clouds then began to collapse through gravity. Each one became hotter and hotter and hotter still until it formed a star. These stars exploded over and over and over again to form all the other elements like carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen and so forth. You'll still learn all about the elements that everything consists of at school. In short, Big Bang supporters believe that nothing spontaneously became something which then exploded to form everything that exists today, all by itself. Now let's think about this logically. No one was there when the Big Bang supposedly happened. So how do they know this to be true? How could everything in existence today have been compressed into a single little dot? What caused the single little dot to explode? In other words, where did all the energy needed for a so-called Big Bang explosion to happen come from? Have you ever heard of an explosion where everything was perfectly organized afterwards? Could this really have happened by itself? How could the Earth have landed in such a special position by chance with the exact and perfect conditions for people, plants and animals to live in, as explained in the previous episode? Now let's say you are on a merry-go-round that is turning anti-clockwise. In other words, it's turning in the opposite direction of the dial on your watch. Suddenly the merry-go-round starts spinning faster and faster, so fast that you aren't able to hold on anymore. As you lose your grip, you will fly through the air while also spinning in an anti-clockwise direction, the same direction as the merry-go-round. Now this is because of a law that we call the conservation of angular momentum. If the planets originated, all of them, in the same way from a Big Bang, then we would expect them all to be rotating in the same direction because of this law. Not so. Why then do three of the planets, Venus, Uranus and the now dwarf planet Pluto, rotate in the opposite direction to that of other planets? Do you think that the stars, planets and moons could change their direction by themselves or does it make more sense to you that their rotation and direction was determined by the Creator God? Ex nihilo is a Latin phrase meaning out of nothing. God created everything from nothing. The universe has not been in existence forever. Only God has been in existence forever. This means 
that the universe had a beginning. If this were not so, the sun and the stars would have used up all their energy and disappeared a long time ago. But as you can see, they are still shining brightly every night and every day. Everything that has a beginning must have been made by someone. Since we know that the universe had a beginning, we also know that time, space, matter and energy could not have made itself because something that did not exist before cannot make anything. The idea of a Big Bang explosion to try and explain how everything originated and self-organized simply don't make sense. I mean, have you ever seen an explosion where everything was perfectly organized afterwards? It only causes utter chaos. But evolution teaches that everything in existence today was formed naturally and spontaneously without God. God is almighty. And therefore, he did not need an explosion or evolution to make everything. He only needs to speak. And it happens exactly as he commanded. One needs a lot of faith to be able to believe that everything in existence today originated spontaneously from nothing. Only God was there in the beginning. And only God provided us with a trustworthy record of the creation account. Through the Bible, he provided Moses, the author of of, amongst others, the book of Genesis, with the correct sequence of the creation events. And through faith, we choose to believe it. The biblical genealogies indicate a young creation of around 6,000 years. Now, how does this work? How did they determine the approximate age of the earth? And what are genealogies? The most reliable way to determine the age of anything is through the testimony of a reliable witness, someone who was there. As mentioned, the Bible is the method of communication used by our Creator, by the one who really was there. The Bible is God's Word, which is why it is the only reliable source on the origin and age of the earth and the universe. It supplies us with an eyewitness account of how God literally created the earth and the universe in six normal days. Now, when you were born, your parents were given a birth certificate, which contained the date and the time on which you were born. The Bible supplies us with a birth certificate of the universe. Genealogies are those lists and lists of names and ages found in the Bible. It is not something we usually read. Actually, most of us skip right over it. It goes something like this. This one's name was so and so and he was so old when his son was born and so old when he died. And his son was so and so and he was so old when his son was born and so old when he died. Utterly interesting. Well, luckily for you and me, there are people who know just how interesting this really is. Through this family history, an accurate record of past events is revealed to us, dating from Genesis to Jesus' first coming. And by adding the ages of our ancestors together, we can accurately calculate what happened when. So, when you add all these ages together, According to the genealogies, it is clear that Adam lived approximately 4,000 years before the coming of Christ and that the biblical flood took place around 2,500 years before Christ. Now add the last 2,000 years since Christ to the 4,000 years before Christ and we arrive at an age of approximately 6,000 years for the creation and therefore the earth. Let's now have a look at day five of creation week. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them, 
saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. With so much love and care, God created the first four days in preparation for the very special living creatures that he had in mind. When day five arrived, a wonderful, exciting day, the earth was ready. All the right gases, water and soil, plants and fruits for food, as well as the sun to give light and warmth, had already been prepared in anticipation of this fantastic event. So on day five, God created all the various water and flying creatures according to their kind. Suddenly, the water swarmed with creatures. Big fish, small fish, whales, plesiosaurs, jellyfish, crabs, krill, corals, and so many other creatures filled the oceans. At the same time, the blue sky was suddenly alive with a kaleidoscope of color. Various kinds of birds showcasing the most colorful feathers began to fly through the air, accompanied by all kinds of insects such as butterflies, beetles and bees, flying mammals such as bats, and also flying reptiles called pterosaurs. Now, just in case you're wondering, the Hebrew word translated as birds in our Bible is the word, that one, which I certainly cannot pronounce, and it means flyers or flying creatures. Since bats, plesiosaurs and insects obviously have wings and can fly, grouping them and birds together under the Hebrew label winged flying creatures is completely accurate. Can you even begin to imagine what a spectacular sight it must have been and how amazing it must have sounded when all the birds simultaneously started singing songs of praise to their Creator. If you listen carefully in the morning, when you first open your eyes before jumping out of bed and rushing to meet the day, you will hear how they still sing their praises to God today. The wings of these flying creatures differ from each other. Bird wings consist of feathers. But insect wings consist of membranes or sometimes thin scales. Bat wings consist of skin stretched over the long arms and hand bones, while the pterosaur skin is stretched over the long fourth finger to form the wing. Now birds are specially designed to fly. Their bones are much lighter than our heavy solid bones because birds' bones are mostly hollow and full of air pockets. But their bones are not weak at all because they have special cross members to support and strengthen the bones. Even the bills are designed to be very light. It is made of keratin, the very same material that is found in our hair and in a rhino's horn. Birds also have very strong chest muscles and their lungs are specially designed so that they can absorb the maximum amount of oxygen. If it were not for the special design of birds, People would probably never have figured out how to design and make aircraft, since aircraft were built mainly by imitating birds. I think we can agree that no aircraft designed or built itself. Someone very clever must have done it. Since it's quite clear that design, in other words, good planning and intelligence, was involved in building aircraft, we know that a very intelligent designer had to be involved in this process. Where there is design, there must always be a designer. Likewise today, when we look at all the living creatures, as well as all the non-living matter, and we see how each organism is specially designed to adapt to its environment, then we know that our almighty God is the master designer. Now, evolutionists believe that all living organisms have changed or evolved from one kind into another kind over millions of years. This involves non-living matter miraculously changing into some unknown small living creature consisting of only one cell, which then evolved over billions of years into the wide variety of living creatures that we can see today. But history has not produced any evidence of this. 
Furthermore, some people believe that whales evolved from some land animal. But there's absolutely no evidence for this silly idea either. In any case, God created the land creatures on day six, after he created the sea creatures. We'll learn more about that in the next episode. I cannot wait to see you there. Till next time, may our loving and heavenly Father bless you and keep you safe. Thank you.